Hey guys, it's Steph. Welcome back to my channel. This is a Q&A video, which you might've been expecting because I did post a status on my YouTube channel for you guys to ask me some questions, which thank you for the responses. I'm gonna do my best to answer them to the best of my knowledge, based off of my lived experience here in Ireland for the past two years. I'll just briefly say, in case you are not new here, my name's Stephanie. I usually go by stuff. Myself and my husband and our two girls moved to Ireland two years ago. I'm from Michigan. My husband was born and raised in Ireland. We met in Michigan. We had a kid, got married, had another kid, all of that in the United States. And we've now been living in Ireland for two years now. I'm not gonna waste any more time on an introduction because we got a good bit of questions. The first question, the cost of living. I got a couple of these and I think people want me to get into a little bit more detail. So I'm gonna name off some of our bills and monthly expenditures just to kind of give you guys a good idea. We're not like super great about tracking and writing down and keeping a spreadsheet of absolutely everything we spend. So Gary and I sat down for a few minutes in the kitchen this morning before we left for work and I did my best to write some things down and I'm going to try not to talk for too long and I'm going to rattle some of these numbers off for you guys. I think a lot of people know this, but the cost of gas over here is more expensive. Right now it seems to be about one euro 61 per liter. I will put what that equates to for the cost per gallon right here. I'll do the math while I'm editing. Petrol's always more over here. Cars are generally more expensive over here because everything is imported. I drive a 2013 Volkswagen, just a small car. So that's 10 years old. I did buy it two years ago. We paid 10,000 euro for it. When I purchased it, it had 86,000 kilometers on the car. Gary's car is a 2015 BMW estate. So it's just, it's a large car. It's not an S. SUV, but it's a, a large car. He paid 15,000 euro for that car. And that car had 86,000 miles. It's from the UK. So it was in miles, but it had 86,000 miles on it when he purchased it. Car insurance, Gary's car insurance is 140 euro a month. Mine's 86 euro a month. I am a name driver on Gary's insurance policy. Also over here for your car, you pay a road tax. You can pay that every I think three months, six months, or by the year. And the cost of your road tax depends on the emissions of your car. So I guess that's kind of similar to like how we pay for our tabs on our registration plates in the United States. The last expense you can have for your car, there's an NCT test that your car has to take every so often. Right now, I think for my car, it's every two years. I think it depends on its age. The NCT is not expensive itself, but it might essentially force you to put a little bit more money into your car than you might be forced to in the United States, for example, because it has to be up to par and up with all the standards that you're being tested for. And if it's not, you have to fix them and put the money into your car for it to pass and be good to go to drive on the road. Obviously everyone has to put money into their car sometimes. Sometimes something goes wrong with your car and you have to fix it in order to drive it. But sometimes you might be able to get away with not doing something or putting it off because you might not have the money. But if your car is due for the NCT and there's these things wrong, you have to put the money into your car. Oopsie, somehow I forgot to mention this one even though it was on my sheet of paper, but we pay our gas and electric bill every two months. Last electric bill was around 600 euro and the gas was around 100. 120 euro. Groceries, this is a pretty rough figure, but I do think it's pretty accurate that we pay 600 euro a month. I'm a stay at home mom, so I'm like always at the grocery store. So it's kind of hard to come up with an exact figure. I might run in to grab a couple things, 25 euro here, 60 euro there. A larger shop for, for us is generally around 130 euro, but I never do like super, super large of a shop because I know I'm just gonna be back there within a few days anyways. But I think around 600 euro a month is a pretty good number to give you guys for an idea. The TV license, you have to have a license for your, to have a TV in your house, which I didn't even know about that when we first moved over because we, we didn't own our own house, but that's 160 euro a year. This next thing, it could be a whole video in and of itself, which I should do for you guys, but I'm going to talk about what we pay for health insurance, which is nothing. We do not have health insurance. Gary just got a new job and I do believe that we will now have health health insurance, but I'm not going to get into that because he just started and I'm, I'm not sure I can't give you the best knowledge, but I will say a standard GP visit is 65 euro. So 
I like I take medication for my anxiety. Right now I'm checking in every six months. So if I'm due to go in to go and be able to have refills on my prescription and I need to check in with the doctor, I'm gonna pay 65 for a visit. If Molly wakes up sick tomorrow morning and I need her to see the doctor, it's gonna be 65 euro for the visit. And what I pay for a month for my prescription for my medication is 11 euro a month. Gary said to mention like one time he got kidney stones. He didn't know what it was when he was going into A&E, which is like the emergency room. That visit ended up costing him 120 euro. Actually, the other day, Gary went into the doctors because I've been telling him, you need to go in, just have a checkup, have your bloods done, just, you know, for peace of mind, just... Yeah, so his blood works cost him 30 euro. So for where we're at right now, we haven't been really paying too much for our healthcare needs. Gary said maybe to mention that in the States, if over the years, there could have been anywhere between 180 to $350 per paycheck that came out for our health insurance. Gary also said to mention over here, it's not that there's not any property tax, but in the States, or at least in Michigan, we used to have to pay a summer property tax and a winter property tax. And he said that those could get kind of pricey. Next thing when it comes to expenses, which doesn't affect us too much, but Ireland has the highest taxes in the world for alcohol and cigarettes. Sometimes when I am out for the night and I'm having a few drinks with friends, I might smoke a cigarette or two. But other than that, the cost of cigarettes doesn't affect me, but they are 15 euro. Alcohol doesn't affect us too much either because we really don't like buy alcohol just to have around the house. So when we do go out, our tab does add up if we're having several drinks. But yeah, and also because Gary likes to collect whiskeys, in particular Irish whiskeys, which is funny because sometimes it can cost more to buy an Irish whiskey here in Ireland than it would have costed for him to get it in the States. I think that's all I'm gonna say for monthly expenditures. Our house, houses in Dublin are quite pricey. It's not like that everywhere in Ireland, but they can be quite pricey. In Dublin and in comparison to where I left, where I lived in the States, it's definitely more of an expense for us, but there's obviously parts of the United States that have really high prices for their houses as well. I feel like I didn't wrap this segment up as best as I could, but I wanted to say that when Gary and I were thinking about it together, we were like, I guess we probably would say that our monthly expenditures aren't really too far off from what they were in the States because I think that's ultimately kind of what people are curious about. And yes, there are things like gas, for example, that would be more for our monthly budget, but then there's ways in which we spend less, like we're not paying at least or right around $500 a month for health insurance every single month coming directly out of the paycheck. So I would say even if anything, because the cost of living in Ireland, I think even especially compared to the rest of Europe, can be a little bit pricey. But for us personally, even if we're spending a little bit more than we were at times, also keep in mind, we just moved over here. So we had some extra expenses and buying our furniture again. And there might be times where we are spending like a little bit more monthly than we were. Also at the same time, since we left the States, prices have rose over there too. But I'm just trying to give you guys the best idea. Okay, woo! And see, I knew that question in itself and I'm like trying, <laughs> I'm trying not to talk too much. I knew that question in itself could be a long one. Okay, next. What have been some of the biggest challenges for you and your family as you've made the transition to Ireland? Well, I'll talk about one that affects both Gary and I, and that was the, the house buying journey. It's, it's kind of difficult to buy a home in Ireland. Again, that's something that if I really got into it, which I'm probably not the person to do so, you can actually follow this Instagram page right here. This guy seems fantastic and really, really helpful when it comes to all things home buying process in Ireland. And he also even wrote a book too. So if you're really interested, you can maybe give him a check or even purchase his book. But it's no secret if you're not new here that it was a little bit stressful, the house buying process, just the process itself. It's more lengthy and more frustrating. And then also the cost of houses are higher. Um, For me personally, my biggest challenge, and it still affects me very much every day. My mom took our move over here very, 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 very badly. And basically it's affected our relationship so bad that she, she doesn't want to hear from me. So we don't really speak. We haven't really kept up with communication. Um, 
Obviously, as you would probably guess, that's been the most difficult thing for me personally, definitely overall. And I still deal with it really technically every day. Um, I think I have the best and healthiest outlook I can for myself. And I know that I made this decision doing what's right, what I think is the best for like our family. I feel kind of misunderstood. I'm trying to put it as simply as I can, but that's definitely the biggest obstacle. I've talked about it a little bit in other videos, but I don't like to get into it too much out of respect for her and it is kind of a complex situation in general but that is the hardest part for me next on the list is did you need a visa to live in ireland or only to work so i didn't get a visa before coming into ireland i don't actually technically have a visa i have a permanent residence card so when I came into Ireland, I entered as the spouse of an Irish citizen. And so at the immigration desk, desk in the airport, when they were looking at my passport, I had my marriage certificate on me. I don't think I had too much else, but they put a special stamp of approval. They did something special in my passport so that afterwards, when I went into the office of immigration, I was able to get my permanent residence card. And there's different stamp types. I believe I'm a stamp four. Um, and that, uh, cause I'm the spouse of an Irish citizen and I'm not working cause I'm a stay at home mom, but I'm nearly sure that that does give me permission to work in Ireland. Tips for transitioning kids to a new country, anything we wish we'd done differently in regards to our girls settling in. I will answer as best as I can, but I do think that we had some things that made it an easy or smooth transition for us. I don't know if we're just a lucky scenario, but our kids adjusted so well and so smoothly. Like we honestly didn't go through any difficulties when it comes to them. Their ages were, um, Kiva was just turning eight and Molly was just about to turn five. So of course their ages play a part. I'm sure Kiva had been in school for a few years in the States and she definitely had friends in the States, but I, it, it wasn't something that was too hard on her to leave them, I guess. Like, of course she said, I'll, I'll miss these friends or I'll miss blank or blank. Um, but yeah. And then Molly basically had a really interrupted preschool experience because of COVID. So she almost essentially barely didn't go to school or really have like friends that she had made. When Kiva started school, she made friends really fast. Her teacher said she was just really social, fit in very well, gets along with everyone really well. And I mean, these are things that can be specific per child anyways. Like Molly definitely was very shy her first year of school, but I, I really can't help but feel like she would have been shy her first year of school in the States as well. But you know, that's something I can't really be too sure of how it would have been. But yeah, they, I don't, I don't know that I have any tips or tricks. I also think it's really helpful to us in particular that all of Gary's family and friends are here still. So we knew a lot of people coming over. I mean, Gary has like lifelong friends that are just amazing and they have such a great bond and connection and all of their wives are amazing. And I've met them all before and there were people already here ready like to welcome us, us in with open arms. I just think it went really smoothly. I'm sorry, I feel bad that I don't have a better answer for that question. If there's anything else you want to know specifically, ask in the comments, please. Oh, wait, no, because the other part of that question was, actually, this is important. Anything that we would have done differently. I've said this in the video that I posted about schools, more specifically about the schooling situation in Ireland. I think because the curriculum must be somewhat different in the United States. When we came over, Kiva started into second class. And in hindsight, I'm not gonna get into it too much, but I wish I would have had her start in third class, but I didn't know at the time. It wasn't like it was up for debate in my mind, which would, we be, would be better. We enrolled them in the school. We gave the girls ages and they said, okay, Kiva will be in second class with this teacher. But again, long story short, that year of school, it seemed like everything, all the inform everything that she was learning was kind of a repeat of things that she had already learned. I'm not gonna get into like what happened when I spoke with the teacher and everything, cause actually I do have a video on that if you'd like to go check it out, but that's what I wish I would have done differently. So maybe if you're coming over and your child has been to school, let's just say four years in the States, maybe, I don't know, maybe look into it more, maybe talk to 
the staff better, explain the situation. I don't know what else to say, but that's what I wish that we would have done differently. Is there a community of American friends you've made over in Ireland? I wouldn't say there's a community of friends. There are some parents at the school that I've got to know just a little bit, more so somewhat acquaintance style. Um, I do have someone I like I would consider a friend. It's a parent of a girl in Molly's class and I chit chat with her sometimes. If I see her there, we did have one play date together. She's really great. She is from the States. She's been here for like 12 years, but yeah, uh, I there's a couple of parents at the school that are from the States, but beyond the, the woman that I just mentioned, the other people I just have kind of only talked to briefly. I guess I would say like, I don't like necessarily have um, a community of American friends, my, you know, um, the friends I would consider myself closest to are, are Irish. I, I didn't feel the need to seek out like Americans because I was feeling out of place in Ireland. Like I just feel like I fit in really well with Irish people. Like they're not necessarily like too different. And obviously there's not a different language. So, you know, that would probably make things different obviously if I was living somewhere where there's a different language and I didn't speak it very well, so. What was the final straw to move to Ireland and say enough is enough? Oh. I knew this video was gonna get too long and uh, I, I'm trying to put, I'm trying to like consolidate and give a good thorough answer without being really lengthy with my responses. The final straw. I'm gonna start by saying this. The number one reason that we came to Ireland was for our kids' safety, well-being, and upbringing, and feeling pretty confident that we'd feel safer and our kids' well-being would be improved upon overall. I feel like I'm kind of dancing around what I wanna say, but um, it would be lack of weapons control in the United States. I actually feel like I kind of want to be careful about what words I use. I don't ever get into topics like this on my channel, but when I watch like TikToks, for example, and I know that YouTube has some, a lot of guidelines, sometimes you can't say certain words. So if I'm sounding funny, it's because I'm maybe trying to be careful about the way I'm saying it because YouTube could take down my video. When Kiva was five years old and she started kindergarten, she would practice active shooter drills. And although it is something that you do technically have to do because of the amount of tragic incidents that take place in school, you just wish that it wasn't the solution and to have what seems like almost half the country not be on board with even common sense weapons laws, um, it's just, because Gary's from Ireland, it's something that we technically always knew was an option. The past um, couple of years that I was living in the States, I, I grew and shifted perspective as a person. I feel like I started to grow a lot. I started to learn a lot more and pay attention a lot more. And there's a lot of things about the States that frustrate me. I was actually, talking about it with a friend. And I think she said something like one time somebody said to her, oh, well, the chances of one of those things happening in school are technically low. And I sometimes put it like this, driving a car in Ireland, driving a car in the States, when you go out on the road, there's technically a chance you could get into an accident and injure yourself or even worse. Those things can happen no matter where you're driving. In the United States, the likelihood that your kid could go to school and not come home that day is greatly different than it is anywhere else in the world. And that's kind of just like the way that I like to think about it. And Gary's from here and we had the opportunity to be here and something in my gut and in my mom mind made just, I don't know how to explain it. I just felt like, I just felt like I had to do this. It was hard decision. It wasn't like necessarily like a decision I like wanted to feel like I needed to make. And the other part of it is like, sometimes I actually feel guilty talking about it because it's 
a decision so, so, so few people even have the opportunity to make when there's millions and millions and millions of families affected and every single child and parent deserves to feel safe in school. The parents deserve to have their child go to school and then for them to feel safe and not worried. And I wish there was movement towards improvement that could help everybody. I'm gonna leave that there. I feel like several of these questions could actually be videos just on that one question itself. Culture or house differences you found when moving to Ireland versus the US. So I will say culture because I've, I've gotten some questions about like, is there culture shock and maybe the differences in culture. And I also was saying this with my friend, she's actually from Germany, but she lived in the States for years with her husband who's from Ireland as well actually. But cause I was like, I said to her, I'm like, people ask me that. I'm like, I don't really think there is a culture shock. I don't really feel like it's all that different over here. I don't feel out of place. I don't know. I've, I've had people ask me that a good bit. Like, does it feel so different over here to you? And like to put it simply, like it really doesn't. And I don't know how to get any more into the, sp the specifics, but um, I don't know. Irish people are great. They're welcoming. They're not like, I don't know. <laughs> I wish I had a better answer for that. Obviously everyone's different as well. Like I'm, my own unique person going through my own personal journey. And I feel like, you know, I'll always be learning and growing throughout life, but I feel like I've went through a lot of learning and growth over the past five years. So I'm in a relatively pretty good space. Um, So maybe that helps with um how I deal with being over here. One more thing I just wanted to add is actually, I wanted to say that as far as culture in America and what I miss, I miss the presence of other cultures and not that Ireland is only Irish people. Obviously there are people that have immigrated here from other countries, other parts of Europe, other parts of the world, but America, it's just different. I mean, the population is simply much bigger and there's just, I don't know, I suppose more diversity. Although I do feel like over the years, Ireland's diversity has, um, you know, improved and, and increased. So, but I just, I just wanted to add that. The one thing I'll say that my friend and I were agreeing that we miss is sometimes the like certain conveniences in the States, like literally just the grocery store being bigger with a bigger parking lot, easier to find parking, um, the, the doctor's office not being down in the village. And like one time I went to, like the, the other day I went to the dentist and because it's down in the little village, like I was, I couldn't find parking because if it's busy enough, it was hard to find parking. And I almost thought I was gonna miss my dentist appointment, but like my dentist in the States is just its own standalone building with a big old parking lot. Like, I don't know, that might sound silly, but it's a lot of little things like that, that kind of add up. I don't know, more options and more convenience in the States, I suppose, more drive-throughs. I'm not like complaining. I'm just saying, of course, we, you know, like growing up and living my whole life in the States, I'm, I'm used to those things. So of course, sometimes I can't help but be like, oh gosh, I miss how that was. Things I miss about the US, whether it be the way of life, culture or food or other items, like I just said, kind of with the convenience and there is just more options for things. Like I can go on and name off little examples. Like I miss Target's shoe selection and having two Targets and two Kroger's or TJ Maxx and Marshall's and Home Goods. But like those are all material things. America is very like consumption driven. That was something else I was saying with my friends. So it's not necessarily like one of the most important things in life, but I'd be lying if I said like I never miss those sort of things. But because it's not one of like life is truly about, um, truly the biggest thing I miss is obviously my family and friends, of course. Foods, I did, I just did a little bit of a restaurants I miss, like Chipotle and stuff like that. And yeah, there's certain items from the grocery store, which I've also done a video on that, but nothing like huge or like nothing that of course keeps me up at night. The simplest way to put it is there, there's just a lot more options in the United States. Things I love about Ireland or that Ireland got better.
Well, I'll start off by saying the beauty and where we happen to live, we're near enough to the sea, which also makes it extra nice. But yeah, there's some beautiful spots in Dublin. A few videos back, actually, I did one of my favorite places to visit for the views, for a good nature walk, for a good outdoor walk. You know, I think over, well, in the EU in general, there's more regulations about maybe what goes into your food, what goes into your products editing step here to add something else. Maternity leave is something that Ireland got better. I was actually just with a friend who is currently on maternity leave. There's, as I think most people know, the U.S. is actually terrible for any sort of guaranteed maternity leave in support for mothers. Um, I did have to Google it to see what it was because I wasn't here when I gave birth or just after giving birth to my kids. So it says you have the right to take 26 weeks maternity leave. If you become pregnant, you also have the right to take up to 16 weeks additional maternity leave. Also, they have a children's allowance for every single child. I believe it is 140 per child per month that each family receives or goes through the mother. I know that I had to um, sign up and uh, do everything that I needed to do in order to receive that for our family. I, I think I said this earlier in the video, but I said it in one of my recent videos too. I've just met a lot of great people over here. I think the Irish are great people. They're welcoming, they're kind. I feel like they're, I think they're pretty easy to get along with. Are we planning on living here permanently? How often are we visiting the US? We are planning on living here permanently we did go into it with like oh gosh if things go absolutely awfully and we hate it that yes we do have the option to go back to the states but it it is a pretty permanent decision but sometimes like gary and i are like by the time the girls are old enough and maybe off and doing their own things or if they move out and are going off to college like would we would we try to move somewhere else or maybe even move to another part of Ireland? I don't know. I always feel really interested in Galway. Like sometimes I say, I wish that Gary's family was from there because that would have like directed us there in the first place. We have not been back to visit the US. I would like it to be a once every year or year and a half thing. I, you know, obviously the expense of traveling, especially all four of us going over to the States is high and then with buying a house and switching jobs and everything else that has all went on it's very unfortunate that we have not been over to visit and i feel quite guilty um but everyone is welcome to come visit here okay guys i have to wrap it up here 38 minutes my phone says i'm sure i will edit that down i knew this was going to be a lengthy video i hope i did okay if I didn't answer your question good enough, I am so sorry. I'm sorry if I missed your question. I think I got everything and now it's just so long that I am just gonna leave it here. Thank you guys so much for watching, especially if you've made it all the way till right now. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and please, subs please subscribe to my channel if you haven't and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.